Heavyvinyl.com. We're here talking with the legend, Wino from The Obsessed. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, man. So tonight, this is basically the first night of the tour. What's uh, What are you guys uh, looking forward to the most about this? Um, playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're the first band you know, out of three, and so um, it's actually good in some ways because we can we load in last, and then uh, we stay on stage, we don't have to strike our gear, and then we can chat check. So. Oh, right. Pretty, yeah. pretty psyched, yeah. <laughs> I'm really psyched to see those two bands, too. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. yeah, you got the Devin Townsend Project and Clutch are going to be playing yep. tonight. And, uh, I'm still learning a little bit about the Devin Townsend Project, but uh, we, I've known Clutch for quite a while. There's quite a few shows them, so it's all, always a good time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you guys have uh, you just released uh, your self-titled uh, The Obsessed, uh, which hasn't, uh, if I remember correctly, it hasn't been out, or no, it was released in 1990, but it hasn't been out for like, some like 20 years, is that yeah, right? Yeah, there's been a couple like re-releases, but... Uh, Small runs, I mm -hmm. think that. Um, but when relapse, and we did got our deal uh, with relapse and did sacred. Uh, part of our deal was that we they wanted to re-release the first record, and uh, you know we found some cool demos put in there with it, and then we also found a live show from '85, a really nice long set that kind of encapsulates exactly how we felt and how the times were. So we that's in there too. Like you, the vinyl is, uh, you can get a vinyl copy of the, the purple record, vinyl copy of the demos, and then you get a download card for the live, or you get the CD that's out. Oh yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's like uh, different colored vinyls and stuff. It's, yeah, pretty happy. Yeah, the one I saw was like a purple splatter. It was just yeah. a really nice looking. Yeah, and they did a really nice job on the on the cover too. I mean, uh, at one of the re uh, represses recently was uh, the purple was kind of pink. Oh really? Well, yeah, that, that wasn't relapse. That was uh, another friend of mine. Uh, I let him release it right before we got signed. So. Oh okay. Small run. Yeah, yeah. Now that picture on the front. I mean, what I loved was you. Your mullet was what I aimed for when I was a kid, yeah. and that shit was majestic. Now, oh, thank you. Did, 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 was it uh, a shame to get rid of it? Well, you know, we, we, we rolled with the times. I mean, it, um, we were doing that stuff a long time before, like Motley Crue or Lord's <laughs> Ventures, anybody. And, um, you know, I always wanted to kind of have a, uh, I always wanted to have a mohawk or stuff on here. Well, no, it didn't work out. You know, I was just, just trying to find a way to look outrageous. I mean, mm -hmm. we had a singer at one point in time. Um, Right before that, we became a trio. We had a, a kind of a punk rock lead singer, Vance, who's not dead. And when he came to audition for us, you know, we wanted we wanted lead singer. We wanted to bust out. When we decided we wanted to get lead singer. We put out ads. Mm -hmm. We wanted somebody who was kind of like a combination between Iggy, Morrison, and Ozzy. Because you know? mm -hmm. we were into the punk stuff, but we were also really into the heavy stuff. You know? Yeah. And uh, we found Vance. And Vance, uh, the first thing he did when he came in the room to audition, basically, he he, he auditioned us. He's like, man, you look dated. You got to do something with your hair, you know. Like he was really. He knew what it took to, uh, you know, to, in, in that realm, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so that's uh, where we went. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it was like a phase. And I'll tell you why that uh, I got rid of that hairstyle. I was already wanting to phase it out and grow it one length, but uh, I got an opportunity to join St. Vitus. And uh, that was one of David's, uh, that was one of David's peeves, man. It was like, he said, you know, he said a few choice words about not wanting me in the band because I, I looked like a bleep. But I just, told, oh, I just told him, I said, man, you know what, this is just a phase, and, I, and, I, mm -hmm. and I'm growing up. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it was easy to kind of throw that around back then, you know, yeah. it's like people have gotten upset about it, so I understand that. You know, man, to be honest with you, uh, you know, me and, me and Victor Griffin, you know, we were buddies at the time, like, yeah. we, we'd fucking go to these, like, biker cake parties and high heels and shit like that, we were ready to fight, we were ready to fight <laughs> wherever we went, because the way we looked, you know. I mean, that goes back to the whole punk ethos, too, you know. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Me and Victor, man, we used to crowds around in those days, man, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man. Well, you know, that you were talking about how uh, you guys released Sacred. That explains why Sacred and uh, the self title came out so quickly. Because, I mean, yeah. that was that was almost like some 1970s album release where it's like, ah, oh, we got one in January, now yeah. you got one in October. Yeah, that was part of the deal. The, the, the deal was um, Sacred, or a new record, uh, the Purple Record, the demos, and then we added the live set ourselves again. We tried to make it as nice as patches as we could, you know. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of, uh, I got the lady who did all the original pictures in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend of mine, she, you know, she's still around, she's in Colorado, she dug up all the uh, negatives and I went through that shit, man, and we pulled, you know, I just remember going through all these pictures recently, looking at, like, Joe Lally and Ian McKay and, like, you know, all of our friends back in the day, fucking pretty cool. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, that must have been really, really happy to look at that, you know? really happy, man, that the record comes out again, she's a lot of day, because I really think, um, I don't know, I really think it's a good record. Mm -hmm. I think the songs, uh, 
stand the test of time, I think. And I think some of my best plans. Are oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, stuff like, uh, you know, Tombstone Highway and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I... I, it had been a while since I listened to it, but hearing it again on vinyl was really, uh, that was special for me. Yeah, that was a thanks. really cool feeling, you know, because that's such a killer riff. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, it's been remastered, too, and mm -hmm. we actually did a really amazing job. They, you know, they, the art direction and everything that they did, I mean, we basically gave them a basic idea. Well, they took the, the, they didn't change it much, but when we added all the clauses in, I mean, they just did some masterful stuff, man, you know. Mm -hmm. Just love it. Oh yeah, well, like the uh, the concrete uh, cancer demo right. is on there now. Uh, was that hard to put back together? I mean, was it something you had to scrounge around? Well, the I don't know if you noticed enough. It's, it's a tiny, tiny bit sped up. And, like mm -hmm. you know, if, you, if you listen to it, you, the voice sounds a little tiny bit high. And what it was is uh, back in those days, you had all tape machines, and if the tape machines weren't calibrated together, mm -hmm. sometimes you would get weird. And that and that was like where the you know the voice is just, just maybe a little hit fast or. Yeah. Oh, I can. Now that you mention it, I mean, I can kind of see that just listening back into yeah. it. Oh, really? So that's why. That's why I'm particular. I mean, it's not that much faster, but just enough to sort of like where I was kind of looking at the speed, going, you know, you know, yeah. I think but, I attributed it to the fact that it's like when you're younger, your voice is maybe a tiny bit higher. That's true you know? too. That's true too. <laughs> yeah. But we used to, we used to play break fast anyway, so you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of indicative of how we were. <laughs> Well, now on there, uh, one of the live tracks, one of the things I noticed, I think it was, uh, oh gosh, I forget which one, um, No Blame, the, the track No Blame right. at the very end, right. you actually call out some band for being posers. Now, you don't have to tell me who it is, but do you remember what that was about? I don't remember uh, the name of the band that I said. You didn't? You just, you just said something like, uh, there's some bands, I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, you, you called them out for... Uh, Calling people wimps and posers or something like that. Everybody talks. All these other bands talk about wimps and posers. We won't name no names. But the people who rely on Satan for a crutch are definitely the real posers. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I should have named names. Why not? <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> it's like one of those things. I just wanted to fight. I don't remember who it was. I no, wanted to no, fight. No, I didn't really want to fight. But you know what? I don't know. I, we we probably suffered some uh, uh, perceived injustice. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you tend to let that shit go when you get a little bit older. It's like uh, I still like let it go, man. Here's the thing. You know, now is the time when uh, you know if somebody needs to be told to fuck off, you need to fuck off. Somebody if somebody ripped you off and thinks it's okay, it's like you know you see every day. Hey. Well, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. And that's what's been my philosophy for the last couple of years. It's not okay. I mean, yeah. you, know, you know who your friends are, man, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whenever you have some friends that you can really trust, I mean, that makes a big, big difference. It makes a big know? difference. I mean, who's going to put the boots on that can get you in the middle of the night to break down? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's really how you tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. Or when they actually tell you something that you don't want to hear, but it's hard for you to get pissed out of telling you. Right. Know? I got you. I understand. I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah. Now, let me see if there was a... I can't remember if there was a, Oh, yeah. Um, now, Reed, Reed Raley, uh, he Reed worked with uh, COC. Now, how did uh, he get recruited into all this? Well, basically, um, he was uh, played in the band, right? Awake? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. They got the R in front of him. That's like some sort of like weird drug thing, so you're supposed to... I, I, mean, I was told you're supposed to say, like, right. So, the people know <laughs> was Wake or our Wake. Anyways, um, kick ass man. Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. And the first time that we met them, you know, we were still called Shine, we Street Caravan. We had the name Shine first, and uh, mm -hmm. we got a cease and desist for some cats. But anyways, we rolled up in Little Rock with the rate guys, or rate guys were putting on a show, and um, man, they were just the coolest people in the world, man. I, I was totally impressed by how professional they were back then, and, and uh, but anyway, I got to know Reed, and I really liked his playing style, and um, so fast forward to St. Vitus. So St. Vitus, uh, when we got Henry Vasquez in the, in the Play drums after Armando died. Uh, we would practice at his pit flat pad in Texas. Mm -hmm. And so um, in Texas, uh, we, we started our tour. We started a St. Vitus tour, and we drove for shows in Little Rock. I think we might have even been Metal Alliance with Helmet and all that shit. Oh yeah, I saw that show. Yeah. Maybe. But anyways, so we're in Little Rock, and uh, we don't have a tech. We really realize we need another tech. And so Henry just asked Reed, "Hey man, how do you like uh, road with us?" And he had just, just then, separated from his. His bandmate, so he was pretty. I mean, he, was, he was ready to get get away from it. Mm -hmm. So but basically, we recruited him, Tilly Green, to come out and be our, our tech for our road, mm -hmm. basically. So you know, me and him spent a lot of nights on that tour talking and stuff. And uh, you know, I knew he was a great bass player. And at, at that time, uh, Deep D Penis, the guy, that, uh, you know, the French guy that played bass in on the Church Within, 
Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, he pulled a little nastiness because uh, we he booked the show at Maryland Death Fest and we got half the money. Right, half, we got to advance. Mm-hmm. So we're going to use that money so he could work out his immigration because he has some issues. He lived in the United States without a green card, overstayed his visa by 20 years. He had a driver's license. He paid taxes. I mean, wow. I don't know. I don't, that didn't work for a citizen, you know? But, yeah. But, <laughs> well, I, don't really, I guess I would like to not call myself a citizen. But anyways, so Guy, you know, the deal was that he would take a test flight in from Europe. Because once he left the United States because his family got sick, he couldn't get back in. Right? Or he was afraid to come back in. Right. Because he, what he was telling us was he had a warrant in Los Angeles for a bar fight that he got into. So he didn't tell us any of this, right? We got half the money. We paid half of it to, for his flight so he could take a test flight in. And if he got fucked with, we were going to sort it out with an immigration lawyer. That's what we had the money mm-hmm. for. But he kept saying, yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there. And man, I just knew he wasn't going to come. And I got, I got this bad feeling. Mm-hmm. And it was at the end of the tour, and Reed says to me, he goes, why don't you? He goes, man, I'll tell you what, if you need me, man, you, let, you just let me know. I'll be there for you. And I looked at him at, very, at that minute, and I was like, you know what, man? I think I'm going to ask you if you want to do that right now. Because, you know, I, I've got no confidence in this guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Reed, man, he, he's so cool. And so down there, he... he he didn't want us to even pay for his flights, right? Well, this is back for his, you know. But anyway, so uh, uh, on the day of the show, he said to me, he goes, man, if he would walk in here right now, man, I would hand him my base right now. After all these rehearsals, I said, no, you won't. <laughs> I made sure he wasn't coming, you know. But uh, yeah, Reed, man, he, he's, he's great. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, dude, so he, was, he must be a really solid dude. I mean, you're probably looking forward to doing he's a tour He's a solid dude, and so is Brian. Okay? Yeah. And you know, those two, those two have bonded really, really well in the last, uh, you know, the last year or two, and that's it's amazing. Yeah. Fucking amazing. I mean, Reed lives in another state. Basically, we work it out, man. You know, me and Brian live together. Fucking Reed comes out. Yeah, you've been um, Brian for a long time, haven't you? I've known Brian for a long time, but we didn't have, we weren't, didn't see each other for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Like, I know he would have helped us out in the early days, and uh, he was like Eddie's tech, or a real killer. Like mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then we put Spear Cavern back together with Eddie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then Brian came along to help Eddie. And, and you know, we were coming off the wagon a little bit with Eddie. Like, I don't think he really liked the tour. Mm-hmm. So one day, Brian got behind the kid and yeah, rehearsed it, you know? And, uh, man, rest is that, that was it. I mean, you know, when the wheels came off the wagon, I, you know, I called Brian. I said, man, you, you want to do something? And, you know, I mean, I, I feel really honored because uh, The Obsessed was his favorite band, mm-hmm. the band he grew up with. And uh, he wasn't even a drummer back in the old days. He had become a drummer in the interim where I had seen him. Oh, really? A good drummer. Yeah. A really good drummer. Yeah. The fact that, you know, my music was his, was his favorite stuff that he's always wanted to do, man, it just it worked out absolutely perfect. That's awesome. So I can't really ask. I mean, I can't ask for two better dudes. And then the guy that we have on our sound tonight is also helping us tour manage. Mm-hmm. And that's Frank Marchand. He's the guy who recorded Sacred. Oh, right, right, yeah. So not only is they, his nickname is The Punisher. I mean, <laughs> I, I think for obvious reasons, but you know, he, not only does he kick ass in the studio, he also kicks ass running in front of the house. So. Right, I yeah. I feel like we're in good hands. We're on a shoe We're selling our own merch and everything. We're just four of us on the tour. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we're ready. Oh man, that's exciting! Well, look, I'm looking forward to tonight's show for, yeah, cool, for damn sure, man. Yeah. I mean, it was a pleasure and an honor to talk to you, sir. Talk to you, man. All right, you guys, go check out the Obsessed. They're going on tour from tonight, which is uh, November 29th through January, right? Through two New Year's, we have two days on either side of Christmas. Okay, all right. Yeah, they come around. Come check them out. So, the Obsessed, HeavyVinyl.com. You guys, take care. Awesome, man. Yeah, no problem. It is a good one. As far as I know, yeah, she said we got to take a photo of it.